If you notice that a girl is doing at least two of the following things, chances are that she wants you, bro. Now, this does not necessarily mean the hookup is going to happen on the first date, but it does mean that she has mentally placed you in a category of men that she hopes will make the move on her. Number one, compliance. Now, compliance just means that when you make a request of the girl, she complies and she follows your lead. So a little test that I like to do on dates is if a girl is wearing some jewelry, I mean, ideally not a wedding ring like this. If she is, that's a bad sign. But maybe she has a little bracelet on like this or something like that. You can gently, and it's important, gently, you don't want to grab her hand and be like, come here, give me your hand. Because she's definitely not going to comply. But gently grab the girl's hand and, you know, ask her. Ah, oh, so what's the story behind this little bracelet here? Oh, I mean, my friend got them, they're matching bracelets, so now every time I see it, I think of my friend. And that can lead to a new conversation thread, but what's more important is that as you're gently holding your hand, is she allowing it to comfortably rest there, or does she seem a bit anxious? Like she's pulling it away and she's uncomfortable and doesn't want you touching her. And even before the date, you can test compliance, because for example, if I ask a girl, hey, do you want to hang out sometime this week? And she says, oh, sorry, I'm really busy this week, maybe next week, I'm not really sure of my schedule. She is not complying. Like if a girl really wants to go on the date, she's going to do everything in her power to move her plans and make sure she has time available to see you. Yeah, she doesn't want to mess it up the same way that if you met a really cool, attractive girl, you wouldn't want to mess it up and you try and capitalize and meet up with her as soon as possible. Or maybe, you know, the day before the date, you text her and you say, hey, we still good for tomorrow at eight. And she says, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can we reschedule? Something came up. This would just be showing that she's not that bought in. When girls are bought in, they're going to comply and they're going to make it as easy as possible for you to move things forward because they want things to be moved forward. Number two, danger. Get on the flow. Danger. Get on the flow. <laughs> so deep down, women walk around with fear. Like they're worried that they could be overpowered or taken advantage of by men. And that's why it is critical to always be kind of assessing and just be generally aware is this woman genuinely comfortable around me right now? And obviously comfort alone is probably gonna lead you to the friend zone. You don't just want it to be like, oh, you know, we're, we're all so comfortable together. That's not the vibe, but comfort is a prerequisite ingredient that must be in place to escalate things to the next level. And a big way to look at this is like body language. Does she have closed off body language where she's like really trying not to get near you or does she have more open body language and she's allowing you to get close? So if we're on a date and I'm leaning in to talk to her, is she allowing that proximity to happen or is she doing a little bit of that? That's no bueno. <laughs> Another big one to pay attention to is eye contact. I remember actually at our first date, I was super nervous and he holds really strong eye contact. And so I'd look at him and I'd like look down, but I was like giggly and I was just nervous. And that's different than like not holding eye contact at all and being just extremely uncomfortable. Yeah, she should at least be able to hold eye contact with you for three to five seconds at a time before maybe she gets a bit nervous and looks away. But if she's like eyes darting around all the time, she's kind of like looking for the exit. But I'm curious what you think about this one, but I would notice when I was on first dates with girls, if they went to the bathroom, I'd pay attention. Do they leave their purse or their handbag at the seat at the bar or do they take it with them into the toilet? Because what I noticed was usually the girls were taken into the toilet. They were probably like, I don't want this guy to like look through my shit or rob me. And I knew, okay, I got a little bit more work to do with these girls versus if she's just leaving that there with you, that's showing a pretty high level of comfort. I agree, but I also was thinking like if a girl's on her period, she's definitely bringing her bag with her. Very low chances, <laughs> very low percent chance. Or if a girl is like looking at her phone, not in like a disrespectful way, like she's texting, but a way like she's like picking up her phone, looking at the time, kind of looking around and then putting it back down. But she's constantly like checking the time. She's uncomfortable. Now look, one very easy way to get a woman just excited to rip your damn clothes off is to have a proper grooming routine. Yes, it is so sexy. And that's why we decided to partner with Manscaped to be the sponsor of today's video. Check it out, Manscaped's game-changing tools make it simpler than ever to groom yourself head to toe and level up that sexiness. It all starts with this guy right here, the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Hair Trimmer. I use this twice per week to trim the hair on my chest and abs in order to reveal maximum muscle definition. If you got a bunch of hair, you don't see all that hard work in the gym. Then about every other day, I'm gonna use the Beard Hedger Pro to clean out my facial hair. So first, I'm gonna take off the guard and trim all of the hairs from this line down because that's what creates the strong contrast and really brings out your jawline. Then I'll put the guard back on, set it to the right length, and trim my overall beard length down where I want it. And then once a week, I'm gonna use the Weed Whacker, which is gonna get rid of all those disgusting nose hairs. It works really well. I've tried other ones in the past, and this one just works so much better. And because Manscaped is sponsoring the video today, they're hooking us up with a coupon code that's gonna get you 20% off plus free shipping worldwide. You can use that on any of the different Manscaped tools. Or their Performance Package, which comes with the Body Hair Trimmer, the Nose Hair Trimmer, and a bunch of other extras for an insanely discounted price. Just click that first link in the description to take your grooming game to the next level. All right, number three, 
polarization. So y'all probably heard of shit tests, right? And this is something that I used to be so afraid of back when I first started actively dating, right? It's when a girl does something to challenge you and see how you react. So for example, you must do this with every girl. If a girl says something like that, I'd be like, no, no I mean, I, I have dated other girls, obviously, right? It's not just you, but I'm, I'm not like a player. It's so uncomfortable and cringe. Don't answer it that way. <laughs> And you gotta realize from an evolutionary perspective, because almost every dating dynamic between man and woman has developed evolutionarily, this is a woman's way to test if you're gonna be a suitable mate. She wants to see when you're challenged how do you respond? Because otherwise, how are you gonna be able to protect her and the children down the road? That's the evolutionary mindset, right? The point is, if a girl's giving you a shit test, that's actually a good thing and you should be really excited because it means that she is assessing, like, I'm into this guy, is he what I hope he can be? If a girl is not giving you any shit test, you're probably falling into the friend zone. Now, in terms of how to pass shit tests, the two main ways would be one, just to like not give it any credence and just move on. You must do this with every girl. Yeah, uh, by the way, you said you grew up in New York, right? What was it like growing up there? The point is I'm not even giving any energy to it. It's just like brushing it off. The other way is to agree and exaggerate. This is the more humorous way to do it. You must do this with every girl. Yeah, I actually have the next one showing up here in like 30 minutes. You just own it. Both of them show that it doesn't phase you. If someone challenges you, it doesn't really mean much. Another way to tell if a girl is polarized is if there's a little bit of awkwardness. I think a lot of mistakes guys make is on the date. They're like, oh, it went really well. It was just really easy conversation. But if you have the awkwardness, usually that's because there's that sexual tension building. She really thinks you're attractive. You think she's attractive. So there's like this like awkward tension. Yeah, the awkwardness is a surface level manifestation of the polarization beneath the surface. And probably the most obvious way that a girl is gonna show you she's polarized is by explicitly teasing you. So say you're on a date at a bar and a girl says, see those darts over there? I bet I could kick your ass. Yeah, because at this level, it's like very consciously on her mind that she's trying to tease you. This is the most explicit flirting. The good news is that a lot of times if you lead the way by teasing her, people tend to reciprocate and tease you back. So maybe she says something like, I just love to cook. Yeah, you know, the microwave doesn't really count as cooking. <laughs> or maybe she says, I just love Game of Thrones. Yeah, I'm getting Xersei vibes from you. You're definitely up to trouble. The main thing with teasing is that it's always positive energy. You never want to put a girl down like, I love to cook. Yeah, good thing, because you belong in the fucking kitchen. <laughs> it's like way too much. <laughs> you do belong there though. <laughs> And some girls will go even as far as saying something sexual, being like, oh yeah, I've been told I'm a good kisser. Kind of insinuating that she wants to try it out with you. I don't think too many guys are missing that signal. <laughs> and number four, choosing signals. So a lot of times guys think like it sucks so bad because all the responsibilities on us with dating, we have to approach her. A girl's never gonna approach us. Then we have to text them and set up the date while they're playing all these stupid fucking games. And that's because most guys are not aware of choosing signals, which is essentially the woman's way of approaching you. So for example, something we like to do in the gym is position ourselves next to a guy we find cute. Yeah, I would notice this sometimes that there's a girl working out next to me and I'd notice, but she's attractive. But then I move from point A to B to C, from the dumbbells to the machines, to the squat rack. And she's <laughs> next to me all the time. It's like, I know she's not doing the, the beastly app, full body X push pull routine. She's doing whatever she can to get near you. Or at the bar, you're ordering a drink. There's a girl next to you ordering your drink. You notice her and then a few minutes later, you're over in the corner of the bar with your group of friends. And then her and her group of friends come over right next to you. That's not by accident, almost always. She is doing everything she can to facilitate you approaching her, but staying in her feminine energy. Because as soon as a girl approaches a guy, a lot of times it's a turn off to us and they feel just really awkward about it too. Now in the age of social media, this can happen in different ways because you guys know that situation where you're showing your friend this girl that maybe you're texting, you're thinking about texting and he's like, oh, like, let me, let me look at it. And you hand him the phone and you're like, but hold on, hold up. <laughs> Do not you fucking dare double tap one of these photos and like these photos because then she's gonna know. Yep, happens all the time. So if you notice that a girl's liking your photos or she's responding to your stories, this is not by accident. This is a more passive way to approach you essentially. Now, the big thing is if you try to set up a date with one of these girls and they flake, but they still keep messaging you or liking your photos, this is a girl that's just seeking validation and she really doesn't want anything else. Yeah, this is her game plan now. This is her strategy. She's like, oh, that guy's not interested in me anymore. <laughs> like <laughs> Double tap. <laughs> He's back in my inbox now. 
And then also after you see a girl the first time, if she's texting you first now, or she's even trying to set up dates, another huge sign that she wants things to progress forward. And something else completely different that's gonna make you a lot sexier to women is if you're wearing the new Edge collection that drops next Monday. We're finally releasing our new active chinos. These are a more sophisticated pants. Look, you got your joggers, you got your jeans. You also need a more sophisticated pants to level up your wardrobe. Also the basic tee, this is just the perfect fitting, not too baggy, not too tight, built from our smooth cotton fabric, insanely comfortable, loads of stretch. It's just a simple, sophisticated look that is easy to layer. Also our logo tee, slightly oversized, built from that same smooth cotton fabric. I've been rocking these lately, clean block logo. You need this one. Second link down in the description to sign up for early access. These things tend to sell out quickly, so this will be sure that you get to shop before anyone else. And if you've not consistently been getting these types of signals from women, I would recommend you watch this video next. It's about four things that masculine men do differently. If you start to move like a more masculine guy, more women are going to give you these choosing signals. Click there to watch that now, and I will talk to you in the next video. Stay beastly. Beastly.